In this video, I give a short outline on how you can estimate the new impact curve for a given gauge model. Now consider this data set for assignment four and let us just estimate a standard gauge one one model. We include a constant here. Okay, we get some uh, estimate of the constant and uh, the uh, constant term in the conditional variance equation, the alpha coefficient and the beta coefficient. Now recall that the new impact curve is just the conditional variance as a function of epsilon t minus one. So it means that if we just want to compute the shape of the new impact curve, it really doesn't matter what the previous value of, of the conditional variance was. So it means essentially for in order to compute the shape of the new impact curve, the beta coefficient has no influence. Really. So what the only thing that matters is actually the coefficients in front of terms containing epsilon t minus one. So in this uh, gauge one one model, the only coefficient that actually matters is uh, alpha one or the alpha coefficient or the so-called arch coefficient. Um, the the beta coefficients and the uh, alpha zero coefficient, so the, the intercept in the conditional variance equation only says something about the level of the new impact curve. So where it intersects with the with the, the y axis. But but it has no influence on the on the shape. So I posted a zip file. This news impact zip. It contains just an example of a plot, uh, so an algebra file and a data set that you can use for, for plotting the series. So let us try to open the data set here. I modified it slightly compared to the one in this zip file, but it, it doesn't matter for, for this purpose here. I just changed some of the, the coefficient values in the, these uh, six columns here. So what we do is that we have opened this new impact uh, data set and we have some results. And then we can simply uh, use the algebra code to construct a new data set uh, that takes into account your particular point estimates. So we load this algebra file. So the first, or the, actually the second line here, just gives some points for epsilon t minus one uh, that you're going to use for the plot. So here, epsilon t minus one ranges from minus three to plus three. And I think for most of your models and estimates, you shouldn't change anything in this line here. The note here, we have a, an estimate of the constant term for the conditional mean equation. And this by construction has no influence on the new impact curve. So this is ignored here. Uh, we have an estimate of uh, alpha zero, or the, the intercept in the conditional variance equation of uh, 0 0.02. As I mentioned here, this quantity has no effect on the um, shape of the new impact curve. It only uh, says something about uh, the, the intersection of the new impact curve and the, the y-axis. So only kind of the level of the new impact curve. So if you want to, you could just set this one equal to zero. Then we have an estimate of the alpha co coefficient of round 0.11. Of course, you could insert the exact values if you want to. And then we have an estimate of the beta coefficient around 0.87. Here, this model does not contain any asymmetry or threshold parameters, so we just put these equal to zero. Again, the, the term containing uh, the, the lagged conditional variance has no influence on the shape, only on the level of the new impact curve. 
so so again it is actually quite ab- arbitrary how you choose this lagged conditional variance so you could set it equal to zero i'm quite sure that is what is actually done in the lecture notes or you could set it equal to one uh, you could also uh, use the mean or the 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 empirical mean of the conditional variance which is around 1.4. Again, it doesn't really matter for the shape of the news impact curve. Likewise, if you included additional arch lags, for instance, again, this has no effect on the shape. And again, if you include any additional lagged conditional variances, again, this has no influence on the shape of the news impact curve. So again, you could ignore these terms. Lastly, if you include an exogenous variable or some dummy variable in the conditional variance equation, this has no influence on the uh, shape of the news impact curve. So again, you and ignore that in uh, when, when you do these computations here. So this is actually the only thing that you have to change and then you can just run this. And then this news impact uh, data set is overwritten, taking into account the uh, then the values that I entered for the uh, for the particular parameters in this model. Then what you do is that you choose graphics and you choose sigma two and x. So sigma two is sigma squared, and x, which are the uh, epsilon t minus one values, and you make a scatter plot. If you want to, you can edit the uh, the output a bit. So instead of having this sigma two, you could have sigma t squared. You could have epsilon t minus one. 